What's up, everyone? Welcome to the NBA Pick'em Pod, and I'm your usual host, Dawson Shine. Today, we're starting off with our newest program on the show, which is going to be an all-star update. We'll be talking about and breaking down a bunch of players' cases to make the all-star team, and it's going to be fantastic. We'll be breaking down some of their latest big games that have really showcased their abilities and their reasons for being in the NBA All-Star Game, and we'll talk about who my predictions are and who my hopes are to be in this game. Starting it off, we got to talk about someone who had one of the biggest, best stat lines I've ever seen in the NBA, and that is James Harden the Beard. The other night against the New York Knicks, he posted a 53-17-16 stat line triple-double. 53 points, 17 assists, and 16 rebounds. 9 of 16 from 3, 14 of 26 from the field, and dis- he just lit up the Knicks in every way possible. He accounted for 95 total points, which, by the way, is the average number of points the Dallas Mavericks score every single game. They're averaging 95.1. He almost had that many points in a single game, contribution-wise. Surprisingly enough, the Knicks only lost by 7, but James Harden's night can't be overshadowed by it, what, that fact that it wasn't a blowout. He had the most points in a triple-double ever since Wilt Chamberlain. He tied Wilt's record, to be honest, which is so rare, since Wilt's records are normally completely out of reach of normal human beings. He also is the first player ever to have a 50-15-15 and 15 triple-double. He had a career-high in points, career-high in assists, one shy of his career-high in rebounds, I mean, what more can you say besides fear the beard? And this is a man who was so snubbed last year from the All-NBA team, he didn't even make the third team. Remember, he was second in MVP voting two years ago. And now, he looks like he's right back into true form. And, my god, if he gets snubbed by All-NBA team again, I can't imagine what kind of numbers he's going to put up, since he's having one of his best years ever, if not his best year. He's posting up 28 points a game, also averaging 11.5 assists, running the point in the D'Antoni offense down in Houston, and it's playing beautifully into his strengths. D'Antoni has developed an offensive system that allows James Harden to cut to the basket, get fouled, take free throws, take three-pointers, and also to pass out of double and triple teams in the paint to open three-point shooters around the perimeter. Eric Gordon, Ryan Anderson, Trevor Ariza, Patrick Beverly. His team is stacked on the perimeter. He's putting in a lot of work on the defensive end and the offensive end. And, despite his numbers not being so flashy, has really been a solid contributor to why James Harden is averaging so many assists per game for the Houston Rockets. That team is probably one of the best teams in the West, and I would say, in my opinion, the second best team in the West. Which goes completely against my prediction of them being fourth or fifth best earlier in the year. But Dan Tony and James Harden have really proven me wrong. And Eric Gordon has stayed healthy, which has contributed to them being one of the best teams in the NBA. Continuing on to other players making the same cases for their own All-Star bids, we have Boston Celtics' own Isaiah Thomas, who is leading this team with 27.7 points per game, 4th in the league, 1st in the East for scoring average. Also another 7.5 assists poured in. And he's helping this team go all the way to a 20-14 and 14 record so far, beating the Miami Heat the other night in one of the best games I've seen as a Celtics fan in my life when it comes to scoring output. Obviously, I'm rather young, so I didn't get to see the Larry Bird days, or even before that with Sam Jones, etc. But man, did Isaiah Thomas kill the Heat. Did he put that fire out? He had 52 points in the game, 29 in the fourth quarter, and it was on the second night of a back-to-back. His team was dead in the water. No one in the Celtics scored more than two points in the fourth quarter except Isaiah Thomas, who had a franchise record 29 points in the quarter, which is only too shy of the NBA record for most points in a fourth, set by none other than Wilt Chamberlain with 31. And Isaiah was just unstoppable. He hit 9 of 13 threes, 15 of 26 from the field, 13 of 13 from the stripe. It was an efficient night, 75% true shooting percentage. Absurd to watch. He had a dagger three with only 40 seconds left, up by two points. 
right from the hash mark of the opposing bench, six feet behind the line over a defender, and just nothing but net. You weren't even sure if he could even see the rim. That's how hot he was. And of course, this is his second season uh, being on the Celtics and being an all-star candidate. His first year was about a half a year, so we don't really count that. Last year, as a full member of the team, he did make the all-star team. And it looks like he's making a push to maybe even start in it. Now, there are a couple of other good point cards in the East, such as Wall or even Kyrie Irving. Especially Kyle Lowry, who had a fantastic showing against the Los Angeles Lakers last night. Scoring 41 points in a 123-114 victory. 6 of 7 from 3, 12 of 16 from the field. He only took 16 shots to score 41 points, also having 7 assists and 9 rebounds on top of it. Absolutely fantastic game by him. And he just killed the Lakers from behind the, behind the arc. He would be 5, 6 feet behind the line, didn't matter. Steph Curry range, Damian Lillard range, Kyle Lowry range is now what it should be called. He's actually shooting better than Steph Curry on 3s for the season. 44% compared to Steph's 40%. If that doesn't give you an indication on how good this season is going for him, then I don't know what will. He's averaging 22.7 points a game on 48% shooting in the field and 7 assists on top of it. Now, those aren't the same numbers as Isaiah Thomas, but he's also a much better defender. So, you have to give him props too and give him consideration for that starting point guard role on the Eastern Conference team. But I gotta say, if I'm making a choice, I gotta put Isaiah Thomas in that game as a starter. He's just earned it, carrying the Celtics roster, especially on the offensive end of the floor. And I don't think there's any reason that he shouldn't be the starter. I don't care if he's 5'9", he's the best player on that team, and he's carried them to the third best record in the Eastern Conference. At least with Kyle Lowry, you got someone like DeMar DeRozan, who himself should be a starter in the All-Star game as a shooting guard, who's having a fantastic season, scoring in everything else on the floor. I mean, DeMar is averaging 27.5 points per game on his own and four assists. So, Kyle Lowry's got no sludge for a teammate. You gotta give, you gotta take that as consideration when you're looking at between Isaiah Thomas and Kyle Lowry. Isaiah Thomas has no one like them the Celtics. Avery Bradley's playing very well as a starting shooting guard. He's shooting fantastic, averaging 19, 18 points per game. He's also, he's also averaging the best rebound numbers besides Russell Westbrook in the league with 7.5 per game for a point guard. Or a shooting guard. But he's no DeMar DeRozan. He's not going to carry an offense like DeRozan can. He's not going to put up 40 points in a game when you need it in the fourth quarter. He'll put on, you know, 19, 20 points. So Isaiah Thomas ends up carrying that load offensively so often like he did against the Miami Heat the other night. And since he came back from injury, I mean, he's averaging 37.5 points per game since he came back from an ankle injury. Are you for real? It's absurd. He's putting up 44-point nights, 52-point nights, 35 points, 36 points, 33 points. And he's doing it night in and night out when this team needs it. He knows this is an important stretch in the season. And I think he's really proven to voters that they need to put him on the ballot. And they need to keep him on that ballot. Another person out in the East that really needs to get some consideration, though, besides Isaiah Thomas for that starting spots on the All-Star team, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He is having... One of the best seasons I've ever seen from someone so young in the league. Even even tonight, he put up fantastic numbers in a 98-94 to victory over the Oklahoma City Thunder, having 26 points, 5 assists, 10 rebounds on 10-19 of 19 shooting. He led his team in every single category. He had one of the best games of his season the other night, December 31st against the Chicago Bulls in a 116-96 blowout as well. 35 points. On 19 shots, 13 of 19 shooting, he had 9 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals. But wait, what's that in the block category? 7. Yeah, this man had 7 blocks in a game. As supposedly a small forward slash point forward. That's absurd. I don't even know how to describe that. That's just not right. He's really going to have the best shot having a 5x5 five five in the league, I think, besides Anthony Davis. And this season so far, 23.8 points per game, 54% shooting, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. So he's doing it on both ends of the floor. Defensively and offensively, he's carrying the Bucks. He's being their point guard. He's being their go-to scorer in the paint, slashing. He's working on his outside shooting, though it's not all there just yet. And I think that this is the year that he gets a nod for the All-Star team. 
at minimum, he's coming off that bench with the coach's choices. But I think he should start. He's on my ballot to definitely start. So far, I have Isaiah Thomas, DeMar DeRozan, Janice Antetokounmpo, LeBron James, as always, he makes the roster. It doesn't matter. He's the best player in the world, no matter what the stats say. And then my final pick, though it might be a little surprising, is Kevin Love, who's having low-key an incredible season for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I know people have been ragging on him recently, especially the last couple of years, for being a backup role. He's been relegated to the third third option on a championship team, and it really hurt his numbers. But this year, he's made a bounce back. 22.2 points per game, 41% shooting from three, 11 rebounds, also two assists. Those are great prime Kevin Love numbers. They're not as good as that one season that he had in Minnesota where he put up 26 and 13, but they're pretty close. And that's what's important because he's a third option on a championship team, but he's showing that he's actually an option to go to when you need to score. That confidence is huge for Kevin Love, and I think it's going to be a difference maker in the playoffs for the Cavaliers because they will no longer have to worry about whether Love will show up, play at his best, and really be out there as an option in the late game situations when you need a bucket because I think he's there now. So that's my lineup for the Eastern Conference All-Star startings, starting squad. And I think tomorrow we're going to be coming out with another great episode talking about the Western Conference All-Stars besides James Harden, who I had to talk about today just because that game he had the other night was ridiculous. One of the best stat lines I've ever seen, and I just had to bring it up. Tomorrow I'll give you the four other starters in my Western Conference lineup. Some of them may surprise you, so stay tuned. Also in the comments, let me know what you guys think for the Eastern Conference who you got starting, who you got coming off the bench. Let me know what your thoughts are. This is Dawson Shine, signing out.